Mrs. Ratcliffe here, and I'm uh, talking to you today about how to make a great project. I'm going to give you some tips so that your projects are always awesome. So the first thing is, step one, work out what you want your audience to know. Now that sounds like it's an obvious, but it really isn't. A lot of people get halfway through a poster or a PowerPoint and have no idea what information they're trying to get the audience to walk away from. So start with that. What do you want them to learn from your project? What do you want them to know at the end of your presentation? If you need to do research, just bear in mind that it's more than just typing your question into Google. If you ever need some help finding um, websites or links, I'm more than happy to help you and point you in the right direction. Practice and learn how to scan websites and text for the right information, skimming down till you get the really key points and information that you're looking for. Beware of Wikipedia. Okay, it's fine to use it as one of your resources, but because Wikipedia can be changed by anyone at any time, it's very important to corroborate or back up any information you get from Wikipedia with at least one other resource. Okay, step two, find a way to make it engaging and interesting to your audience. Okay, everyone can sit and talk or stand up and talk. We want this to be something with a bit of polish, a bit of pizzazz. So what's going to be really fun for your audience? Some key um, ideas that I have, people always love food. So if you're going to present something, sometimes you might have a prop or food or some really interesting visuals that can make things a lot more engaging for you and your audience members. Okay, number three, make a draft or a practice version first. Now I reckon, I'm guessing, that about 80 to 90 percent of you guys at the moment don't do this step. Have a go at it. Have a practice at it. Do your practice version first before you decide, yes, this is exactly what I want to do. Okay? And then practice your presentation. Do it in front of the mirror. Do it in front of your family before you get to the, in front of the classroom so that you're really ready to go. And then you can sit back and bask in the glory of being an awesome amazing star. Okay, so I'm going to talk about some different types of projects and what they're good for and what their weaknesses are or what to be careful of. Demonstrations. They're very good if you have an action, if you're going to be doing something, okay? It's um, important in a demonstration to actually have an action you're doing. So there are certain types of topics that really don't lend themselves properly to demonstrations. You really want a prop. You need to make sure you practice your speech. Use talking notes or little index cards to practice what you're going to say so that you come off ready to go. Shows respect for your audience, that you've thought about what you want to say to them. Okay, PowerPoints. I really want to talk about this for a minute because my experience as a teacher is that these are very much overused. They're often terrible. 90% of the PowerPoints that I see as a teacher are awful. Okay, for a lot of reasons. Unless you're making a speech, they're not really um, being used properly. That's not what they're meant for. So, if you must do a PowerPoint, which I would avoid if I were you, I'm suggesting this now. There are some very major don'ts. Don't cut and paste. It's a bunch of crap off of the internet and just slop it on there. It's sloppy, it's lazy, it's not giving yourself any credit for what you could be doing, and it's certainly not giving your audience or your teacher enough credit for what an intelligent audience would want. Okay? Don't let your animation take over your entire PowerPoint. There's nothing worse than sitting there and watching people with their slides rushing in, making bullet noises and um, car noises, and completely taking over the whole demonstration, or, and they, they have no control over the speech anymore. Busy, crowded slides that are too hard to read. They aren't attractive. Um, if you have a single slide, you should have made a poster. One slide PowerPoint is not a presentation and do not read to your audience, okay? If what you want to say is there on your slide, then you are gonna be really boring because everyone in your audience can read. So they're gonna read it and they're gonna be like, why are you reading this to me, okay? So those are my list of top don't do these things when you make a PowerPoint presentation. And again, I would suggest avoiding it altogether if possible. Posters. Now, posters are a bit old school, but they are really good for certain things. That's why we still have posters around in hallways and all kinds of places. They're great for visual learning. They're really good at conveying things quite simply. Um, they need to be attractive. The pictures there need to be meaningful. They should have context. They should be labeled or explained. They shouldn't just be random guy or girl doing something. Um, and the information needs to be well organized. It should be really clear what you're trying to convey. It should be really easy to understand it. And you should be able to get a lot of that information from a reasonable distance, okay? If you're giving size 10 font, 
it's just crammed way too much in there for anybody to actually absorb. People won't get that information from a PowerPoint if it's too crammed in. Oh, sorry, a poster. Okay, for films. Films can be very, very engaging. They're a lot of fun, and they're very multimedia. Okay, but you have to be sure what you want to show. You need to be organized. Most films I see from students, they kind of head out and start shooting. The problem with that is it's higgledy-piggledy. They waste a lot of their time, and they don't necessarily get the camera angle. They haven't thought about um, other people in the shot or the sound and how it travels. So take the time to plan. Okay, use storyboards for images that you want to show them. So what shots you want to do. Use scripts or for dialogue or speeches that you want to do. And have that all organized before you start shooting. Then you can use an editing tool, ideally, to have a smooth finish. That way you can put in headings or bullet points or titles or other things to explain your point. That will make it truly great if you edit it. Okay, there are some other really good ideas, and some of these turn out to be some of my better product projects that I've seen people do. Children's book, it is just fantastic for explaining concepts. Um, the trick is you need to be reasonably good at artwork because the children's books that I've seen sort of fall down were where they couldn't draw very well and they had to sort of cut and paste and color in and it just wasn't as special. The ones that have been beautiful and amazing, the students were pretty good at artwork and could make their concepts really clear. Song, that is really fun, it's really interesting, a lot of times the class really like it. Super important that you give out the lyric sheet before you go because otherwise you're relying on being really clear when you're singing and you're going to be nervous and you're up in front of your class and they may or may not understand the words and if they don't understand the words they're not going to get the full um, concept that you're trying to convey. Interpretive dance, I know this sounds really daggy and it, but it can be really really funny if it's done properly. The thing is um, you may need to do some explaining beforehand, you may need to do some explaining afterwards and obviously it's got to be a very action-based concept you're trying to explain. Um, maybe something concrete, something with props would be really good. A comic strip or something like that can work really well, or a cartoon. Um, again, it's very visual, it's very interesting, it can be really funny, but it, again it relies on you having some solid artwork under your belt. It doesn't really work as well if drawing is a bit of a hurdle to you. Really important, have fun with it. If you think it's fun, if you enjoy it, if you're interested in it, your audience is going to be so much more interested in it. And that is my uh, tips for you for making an excellent project in both science and math. So good luck, and I look forward to seeing your awesome projects.